watching Southeast Texas Live. Now it's time for our February Precious Metals Market Report. Mike Fulgens of Universal Coin and Boy and joining me now. First of all, how are you doing today? Wonderful, thank you, Jessica. You're welcome, and congratulations, because if you could see this back here, this is a prestigious honor that the business has received. Congratulations on that. Well, thank you. Jim Rich came out and surprised us a couple days ago, and that's very nice of them. That's a good surprise, huh? Uh, it's you, one of the best. Yeah, we'll take that. Well, tell us about the coin that recently, if I'm saying this right, $10 million? Is a little, that correct? A little over $10 million. Oh, over even. Okay, tell us about that. Well, the coin was a 1794 silver dollar, okay. nicknamed Dollar of Our Daddies. And this is, uh, that makes sense. That's an appropriate nickname. It's a flowing hair. As you can see, your hair flows, much like your beautiful hair. Oh, Thank so you. it's hey. flowing hair dollar, well, and can't... that's what it's called. Okay. You could have modeled for that coin. I, I was about to say, I wish I could say I was worth $2 million, but that's not true. But that's... And it's, <laughs> it's highly probable that was the first coin struck for a silver dollar by the U.S. Mint. Oh, wow. So okay. it being pedigreed to being one of the first dollars in very high condition, it was graded what's called a 66 on a 1 to 70 scale and coin terms. Okay. But it's very high grade very good pedigree, very important. That is a record by over $2 million for the highest price paid for a coin. Wow, amazing, the record. And tell us, moving a little bit into it, with speaking about something that so, uh, goes for so much, tell us about the counterfeiting problem and really what maybe viewers should be looking out for. Is that a concern? It really is. More and more, I taught counterfeit detection for the American Numismatic Association in the 80s and 90s. And we are seeing more counterfeits coming out of China. On eBay, eBay made two major changes with the Royal Canadian uh, Mounties and with our U.S. Secret Service in the last two years. They don't allow coins to be put on eBay that has the word copy, but there's still counterfeits coming out. And we found a number of counterfeit bullion coins, American Eagles, oh, wow. Ingle Hard Rounds. It's important to know your dealer or your auction house has true experts. Okay, and as far as IRAs and things of that nature, is there something that people should be concerned with the counterfeiting of that too? Well, How's they it? need to know the dealer providing the bullion for the IRAs. Okay. Uh, one of the things, a simple test I've always used, and you don't want to handle valuable coins this way, but for bullion, I tap a silver coin with a, with a pen. Pure silver has a different ring than coins that aren't silver. Mm -hmm. So if you want to have a little fun at home tonight, take a silver coin on your finger and take a non-silver coin and tap it, and silver has a very nice ring to it. So you'll be able to tell the difference then. Correct. Very interesting. And what valuable coins can our viewers typically find, maybe in their change or something that they've had? I know I've even had things from my grandparents, kept it in my jewelry box, something like that. Well, the coins that people find the most are like Morgan and Peace silver dollars, like this, issued from 1878 to 1921 for the Morgan dollars. And the coins that the Peace dollars were issued from 1921 to 1935, they're worth $30 and up for major coin dealers. Now, if you go into uh, someone who's not a major coin dealer, a hotel buyer or a pawn shop, they might offer you 6 or $8. Mm. But major de dealers offer $30 and up. And the thing that people find the most of is silver dimes, quarters, and halves. I made a lot of money as a kid mowing yards and going to the bank and swapping out rolls all the time and driving the bank tellers crazy. Yeah. <laughs> but a dollar worth of 1964 and before silver coins, 10 dimes, four quarters, two halves, a dollar's worth is worth $20. So mm -hmm. if you go through old change and find two 1963 or 64 halves, that's worth $20. Wow. So okay. if you find $100 worth, that's mm -hmm. 2000 mm -hmm. So look for those coins, 1964 and before, okay. dimes, quarters, and halves. Looks for those. And uh, being in the news a lot, like Coons cheerleaders going through, of course, uh, legal issues too, is there something comparable in that being that there is... That in God we trust on the money? Well, I wrote an article for Coin Age magazine and it won national honors. In God We Trust is our national motto. I have a website called In God We Trust on Money.com and people can read about it. But in 1864, it became a motto on our coinage. Okay. In 1956, Congress and President Eisenhower made it our national motto. Mm -hmm. The Star Spangled Banner, most people don't know, there's a fourth verse. It has In God Our Trust. It is our national banner. So between the two, mm -hmm. I don't see how you couldn't put In God We Trust or In God Our Trust from our national anthem or our national motto signed by a president, passed by Congress on the banner. Something for them to think about. 
Thank you. And as far as uh, different ways of, like we mentioned today, of protecting your coins and things like that, we have your information on the screen. Can we just give you a call? You can just give me a call or go to the website, check okay. it out at universalcoin.com. Okay. Thank you for that Precious Metals Market Report. We appreciate Thank it. Thank you Mike. so much, as always. Stay with us. We'll be right back.